Great day to be alive and a shit day to be dead. I'm Clive Parkinson, composition consultant. And if you're thinking, that's not a real job, you just made that up, then you're right. If you're just now joining us, we've just identified a belief or idea that we want to challenge, just as the third essay option of the common application have commanded. And you can find the end result in the description. Now that we've got our belief or idea, it's time to let the monstrous claws of experience tear it limb from limb until there's nothing left but a puddle of fatey tendons and ideological cartilage. Go. Part 3. Describe something you experienced that led you to an alternative belief, i.e. what prompted your thinking. Mm. On my first day there, I quickly discovered that none of my classmates shared the same cautious frugal instincts. Whether their parents made fortunes lending money or spent fortunes borrowing it, no one ever seemed short of a penny. And the object, apparently, was to prove it. At first, I questioned my friend's financial decisions. Surely it would be better to have an actual dollar than a necklace with the symbol on it? But it only alienated me. After weeks of observing my new friend's high-rolling, successful families, I had an epiphany. No one wins at life by gradually saving money. No, the object is to project reckless courage and to dress like you're about to go yachting on a cotton plantation, like some sort of a buoyant racist. Look at Theodore Roosevelt, whose expensive cowboy role-playing adventures in Rough Rider Persona propelled him straight to the White House and even to Mount Rushmore. If I was going to get my face carved into a rock stolen from some Indians in a forgotten wilderness, I needed a risky, vainglorious hobby too. It was that night at the dinner table when I stumbled upon it. I would race modified Toyotas in abandoned car parks in the middle of the night. Hmm. Shakespeare could not have said it better if he'd been 17 and looking for a bad frat party himself. Prior to our observations, we'd been thinking that the whole point of caution and frugality was to deliver us wealth and security. But then we saw something that dashed our expectations and left them writhing in the mud. We saw that our wealthy and secure friends at private school are often not afraid to take risks and throw money around. We also threw in a well-known example from history to help develop our point of view, because it was provocative and fun. But we didn't dwell too long on the details because it wasn't teaching the reader anything about us. We've observed that the wealthy and secure are neither frugal nor cautious. And now we can't unsee it. We can never go back. We have no choice but to reject this thesis that frugality and caution will deliver us from poverty and obscurity. And we've got to replace it with an antithesis that we should instead try to attain wealth and security through risky enterprise and brash posturing. When you're writing yours, challenge the idea with personal observation. We form our views of the world by testing hypotheses about how the world works against the reality we experience. It's sort of like a series of ongoing science experiments, but without the funding, publication, recognition or accomplishment. Experience often forces you to change your mind. At one point, you probably believed that the opposite sex was disgusting, but then you suddenly found one that you'd like to creep on and stare at. At one point, you probably believed that crying was a good way to get people to feed you, but then one day your wife told you she was fed up and wanted a divorce. At one point, you probably believed that you would always be happy, until that October afternoon when you lost grip of that balloon your mother gave you and watched it float away into the sky, never to be seen again, and realized that it represented your hopes and dreams and that you would suffer and yearn forever. The challenge here is to come up with an interesting experience that made you change your mind. It doesn't have to be anything impressive, and it doesn't even have to be anything you did, but it should come from your own life experience. Develop your antithesis. What we need to do next is come up with an alternative expectation of reality to replace the shattered illusions of the past. This is going to be the theoretical foundation of our challenge, or in the immortal words of the common app, your thinking. So let's roll up the sleeves of the mind and start laying those ideological bricks. <laughs> Thinking back to our examples from part two, let's have a look at how some personal observations could shift our perspective from thesis to antithesis. Holding a stable, respectable job is the best way to live responsibly. But then, you notice that the biggest employer in your area is also a big polluter. And you wonder if it wouldn't be more responsible to research climate change, even though that might make it harder to support a family. Saving resources wherever possible is the most upright way to live. Then, you see that a friend of yours is poor at saving money, but invests in gym membership and eats well, so she's always energetic and able to focus on her work. And you wonder if sometimes it wouldn't be wiser to take out cheap debt now to make a high return investment in the future. It's most important to do things your own way. But then, you try playing in a band and realize that you can't put on successful shows without community support. And you wonder if sometimes distinguishing yourself isn't just vanity, and it wouldn't be more important to give credit to the older generation and show respect for community norms. People who study hard should or will be rewarded with a comfortable life. But then, you observe that your uncle has become an expert on astrophysics, but no one will fund his research. 
and you wonder if maybe nobody really deserves anything, and you will only be rewarded as long as you can constantly find ways to be useful to other people. Brilliant, we've done a mental 180 and we've got a whole new belief system to show for it. But is it better? Or did we just join a cult on accident? Is the blood sacrifice mandatory? Join us next time as we boldly translate our new beliefs into action. Will they elevate us to new heights of earthly success? Or will we just fail in a different way and throw up our hands and say, hey, at least we learned something? Hit subscribe and take back control. <laughs>